All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. I've got a couple of interesting stories for you guys today. The first story, I wanted to talk about Dexter Jackson. So Dexter Jackson just competed for the last time ever. This was his retirement show at the 2020 Mr. Olympia, and he's finally posted some recent training updates back in the gym post-COVID-19. So he had the virus. He had a very bad case of it. He had it for a very long time. And he finally recovered from it, and now he's back in the gym and posting training videos again. Again, despite the fact that he is retired from bodybuilding. After securing that ninth place finish at this past year's 2020 Mr. Olympia. Now, the interesting part about these training videos that he's been posting is I had a lot of people sending these to me asking me if I thought that Dexter did in fact look significantly downsized. And in this video where he's doing leg presses, you can kind of briefly see a glimpse of his arms and you can tell his arms do look significantly smaller. Now, again, and I said this with Big Rami, this is perfectly, there's nothing wrong with this. I mean, Big Rami taking time off, it's the off season, Big Rami might look smaller. I think these bodybuilders need to take a break. They deserve to take time off. They need to give their body a rest. And Dexter especially, he has nothing left to prove. He's the winningest bodybuilder of all time in the IFBB. He's retired. He's not going to be competing anymore. Why should he be putting his body through what a pro bodybuilder puts their body through? And Dexter even replied to a comment in the comment section of that post asking about if he had downsized, if he had lost weight. And Dexter actually says, I am sized down. I am down from 265 pounds to 225 pounds. Staying here is the goal. So he says in this post, he is currently weighing 225 pounds. So he's down 40 pounds right now. Whether that's a result of just the fact that he's retired and maybe he's taking a significant off-season time from all the uh, medicines that a bodybuilder would take, if you know what I'm saying, or maybe it's just from the severe you know, situation he had with the virus. I mean, that could have caused a significant amount of weight loss too if he really, really went through it with that experience. But either way, he says he's trying to stay there at 225, significantly downsized. And again, I think that is a good thing. I think the culture of bodybuilders need to be big 24-7, 365. I think it's an unhealthy mindset. I think they're held to an unhealthy standard. And I think we should be supportive and appreciative when a bodybuilder does take time off and give their body a break or even permanently give their body a break from everything that a pro bodybuilder does. That is, that's the key to longevity with bodybuilding. These 300-pound physiques are not sustainable. Now, next up in the news, a physique update from Seth Ferrosi. Seth Ferrosi, you guys might know from owning All American Roughneck, the clothing company, Axe and Sledge, the supplement company, or HWMF, the podcast. But some people might forget that Seth was a very good and very competitive IFBB pro and a damn good bodybuilder when he competed. I think it's been like eight years now since the last time Seth competed. But I wanted to talk about this physique update because I think Seth is looking phenomenal here. And I want to—I really would like to see Seth compete at least one more time. I know he had that recent tricep injury. And like I said, I know it's been eight or nine years since the last time he competed. It's been a while. Uh, but I still remember those days when Seth was with Muscle Tech, I believe it was, when he was in all the magazines and stuff when I was first becoming a fan of bodybuilding. And I think Seth has still got it, man. He's certainly not too old. He certainly still has the physique. Um, and there's the 212 category, and I think right now the 212 category is wide open. I think they're trying to figure out, you know, what direction they're headed now that Flex Lewis is out of 212. Um, they went from Kamal El Gargni last year to Sean Clarita this year, two pretty different physiques. So there's really no set standard in what direction 212 is going. But the real trend that I'm starting to see with 212, and that's probably what Seth would compete in, um, is conditioning, not so much size. And one of the things Seth was really known for when he competed was just coming in crazy shredded. So even if Seth didn't come in the biggest or the roundest or the fullest or have the prettiest structure on stage, if he could bring that same conditioning that he brought like back in 09, 2010 ish, I think he could be very competitive as a 212 bodybuilder. Let me know in the comment section below if you guys agree and like this video if you want to see Seth Ferrosi make a comeback. And now, a word from our sponsors. Uh, 
All right, now next up in the news, Leonidas Arcona with a new Strict Curl PR. Now, this is a seated variation of a strict curl, so this wouldn't count in a competition. The point of the seated strict curl is to eliminate, essentially eliminate, the leg drive from the curl movement. And it also eliminates, to a certain degree, the amount that you can really swing your back backwards um, you know, to assist with the curl. So it makes it kind of forces you into a stricter form. So oftentimes, this is how strict curl competitors train. Um, it's kind of an accessory exercise to the strict curl itself. And a lot of these strict curl athletes use this 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 particular lift as kind of a benchmark to where their strength is at on the strict curl. And Leonidas Arcona recently set a new PR on the seated strict curl with 110 kgs, which is insane because the world record um, is 249 pounds, which is 113 kgs. So Leonidas Arcona is now seated strict curling 242.5 pounds, which is 110, which is the 110 kgs. Um, so he is getting really, really close to being in striking distance of that world record in an actual competition. And he's only in his early 20s um, and already starting to rival the strength of Denis Saplinkov, um, who set that record back in 2016. Now, he did also attempt and fail a 120 kg curl here, which would have been 265 pounds roughly. Um, so almost 15 pounds heavier than the world record, but obviously he did not succeed in that attempt. All right, now the final story that I have for you guys today is a recent video posted on Brandon Curry's YouTube channel. If you have not subscribed, it's called Brandon Curry All Access. Um, and he posted a recent video just a day or two ago, and the title of that video was My Legs Cost Me the Olympia, Never Again. So in this video, Brandon kind of acknowledges and addresses that his legs are the weak point of his physique, and that basically the gist of this video is he's not going to let his legs cost him the Olympia. Again, obviously the biggest contrast between Big Rami besides between Big Rami and Brandon Curry, besides the size difference, is just the stark contrast in the lower body, the legs. So Brandon Curry um, acknowledges that in this video. He posts a leg training video. Um, and you gotta consider Brandon has to be the biggest threat to Rami's title at this point. Brandon was the runner-up at the 2020 Mr. Olympia, and I think a lot of people aren't really taking that into consideration as far as the 2021 Mr. Olympia is concerned. Everybody's wondering, is Phil going to compete again? Um, is Rami going to win, win again? I haven't really heard the conversation revolving around Brandon, as it really should because he was runner-up. He is the biggest threat to Rami's title at this point based on placings. Now, I think the biggest future threat at winning an Olympia title that has not won one already is your fourth place finisher at the 2020 Mr. Olympia, and that is Hadi Chupin, third place finisher in 2019. I think Hadi is going to win the Olympia one day, whether or not it's going to be 2021 or 2025, who knows? But Brandon is addressing his weak points. I think a big reason why he wound up in second place and placed as high as, as, high as he did was conditioning and structure with a little bit more size, especially applied to the lower body, I think Brandon could have the potential to knock out Big Rami next year, this year. But I guess only time will tell. Let me know in the comment section of this video if you guys think Brandon Curry can knock off Big Rami. Give this video a thumbs up if you did in fact enjoy it. And please subscribe to this channel if you have not subscribed yet already. As always, I love you guys. appreciate you guys. Nick Strength and Power, signing out.